you go to variables, it's all there, and then you can go to all right, Soren, why don't you show your code again? Let's just watch Soren's code and see what his does when it executes. Or did you wipe that out already, Soren? No, uh, I, I saved it to my thing. Okay, nice. All right, so let's see what your high code is. Nope. Hi. Nope. Did you forget where you put it? I, it just saved to my device and that's it. Oh, it's right here. <laughs> got to hit cancel to close the window you've got open first. <laughs> now hit cancel. Hit cancel. My you word. just lost it. Yeah. <laughs> Hit file. Open Yo. and then go to your downloads. All right, let's see what Ethan Two's got. Ethan Two, what do you have for your uh, programs? Have you been messing with I it? I do a lot of programs. Which one that. should I choose? Whatever one you think you want to show off first. It's you. Well, I this one's incomplete because it was really hard and it was kind of dumb, but it's my code. <laughs> okay. That's um, your uh, experimental code. Sure. Do you know how to save? Where did it go? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know how to save the programs, Ethan? Too. No. So if you go up to file, you can save. All right, Soren, you want to show off yours? Yeah, it goes up, and then it goes down, and then it turns, and then it goes sideways, and then it turns, it goes backwards, and then it goes forwards, and it turns to the left, and then it goes forwards, and it turns to the left, it goes forward, it goes forwards, and it writes high. <laughs> nice. nice. Now, let's see. I see a lot of drive forward and drive reverses of the same. It'd be really cool if we could set up functions for that, but we can maybe do that in Python. All right, um, Ethan 2, what do you have? I mean, Ethan 1. Mine makes a square. And also, Let's somehow I managed it. to get the first person view. Somehow I managed to do that. So that's yeah, there's two different cool. camera views. Uh, mm -hmm. Bring it up here so we can yeah, see it on the screen you're sharing. Oh, yeah. Um. <clears throat> hit new tab. I'm a tiny bit slow. I basically just not made my right. new a square. Two different colors okay. of square. Are you so based on variables or are you just changing color? It, it, it's um, making a circle. Making a drive turn and then having it change color in between. The circle's too big, yeah. though. <laughs> the square. I already got a square. The circle is the okay, circle ready? Who said ready? Mine has, mine has, <laughs> ready to see my program. So you can All right, one. Ethan, too. Uh, here's I my like program. Mike program. Forward. I think so you just slam into the wall. Good job. Good job, Ethan, too. You mean great job. <laughs> All right, Elijah, what you got? Um, I have a decision making robot here. See it goes, and then it that decides which way is better to go. And then goes in a random angle in that oh, direction. Oh, it made it all the way out. Oh yeah. Nice. Is that the first time you've made it that far in the maze? Yeah. So Chris? what do you think? you can do to be able to change some of the way oh it comes right back mm -hmm. what do you think you could do in, to change the way it works its way through this maze oh and it found the exit <laughs> it did nice yeah it just drove right down the hole Three. <laughs> so i i see and that's like what i did one of those previous youtube videos if it sees more distance to the left than it goes left but that's not always a right decision i think using your location x and y variables could be interesting method Mind potentially you potentially could do some line drawing while you're driving around too so you kind of visualize where it's gone and how it's acting 
and see what you can do to yes, change I your code. Out how to draw a circle. You figure out how to make a circle? Yes. Whatever, and then and turn right for one degree. So it'll make a full nice. 360 degrees. Or what if you, so do you drive say, turn right, right under the drive forward for 1,000? <laughs> well, it takes absolutely <laughs> forever to write. No, it I does not. That. What you can do is you can do drive forward 180. And then you can make it do a two degree each time, and then you can also set your drive velocity to a hundred because it's already automatically one hundred and fifty. Drive velocity goes to one hundred and fifty automatically. No, fifty automatically. Oh, 50. Okay. Oh God. So. Okay. All right. Um, what do you have, Ronan? Um, mine. It just makes this cool shape. This cool square with. Okay. Let's see it. Where is it? I don't know where it's at. It. <laughs> oh, it must have. I see your you face. Close it? You just it. Does everybody know how to save these programs? Yeah, I saved I them. Yeah. Yeah. It is Bios faster. Too. Ronan, let me stop sharing. Oh. I, all I see is your face. Oh, I see you're drawing now, Elijah. Look at that. <clears throat> Yourself in the face. It's only three. <laughs> Why? Did anybody else get snow? Yeah. We did. Yeah. I did. Yeah. yeah, we did. yeah. I had some like long flakes in my house. Mine yeah, I'm flakes looking, are Elijah. Yeah, it's faster now. It's oh, four times faster. No, it's, it's eight times faster now. <laughs> All right, Ronan, why don't you uh, share your screen there and show everybody else you got? It makes a parallel square. Oh, that's actually really cool, Ronan. It yeah, this is like the fifth program I did. It's like it makes a squiggle worm. That's what it makes. Yeah. A, squiggle worm. a squiggle worm? Is it a technical term? Yeah, like yeah, the, it's, the, sketch it's the shape. shape. Like a squiggle worm. Like that shape is thing, you know? I watch too much JSE. I think that's a problem that I have. What? Watching too much JSE. Oh, my man, too. Is there a way to make a timer? No, oh, yeah, wait. Yes. Imbecile. You unimbecile. All right, so it looks like everybody's had a chance to experiment with this new world. You can make uh, it. One you thing have that I'd you like to start looking at doing is expanding your thought process of this world as well as putting that or transcribing that into Python. Because we can do some fun experiment stuff with this nice virtual world, and then we could take that same concept and our new knowledge of Python to actually start making code that will work for our Raspberry Pi tank bots. Cool. That we don't have. Well, the point is to have tank bots set up. I think I was talking to Sorry about this. To have some tank bots set up that you guys can remote into and then we can drive them around together once we get some stuff working. And then what I'm actually working on doing is setting up a bunch of stuff for uh, Google Maps API, because ultimately it'd be really nice to be able to import GPS data, and then you can tell it to go to a certain GPS location, say across the yard, for example, it'll start driving over there on its own. I have a question. Yes, sir. What if we did this with the real tanks? <laughs> what? Sorry. That that's the what idea. This was real. <laughs> what if we did this? What this virtual world? No, the uh, the whole mini tank thing, except with like full size tanks firing actual gels. Yeah, Soren's that's, kind of that's an dumb option. <laughs> Soren I mean, that's futuristic. That's a good. That's a good thought. <laughs> no, it's not. Soren's driving. It's like drone warfare, right? 
Yeah, except caves. <clears throat> they have explosive shells that can destroy a house in an instant. Exactly. And they're super expensive. I don't know. Have you guys had a chance to look at uh, the program that I put together? No, I haven't. I mean, no, no, so. I haven't. You. I'm going to make a forever program that'll just go to a random coordinate. Okay. Wow, that's coordinate very... on the, the map, you mean? Yeah. <laughs> Mine, mine's pretty like simple, though, program. is it just drives based on what it sees. And that's something that I want to start getting towards. And we could do that concept with Python, but instead of actually seeing data, uh, like, an actual physical thing, we could use our Python programs and functions to basically guess what's there uh, based on what we see in spreadsheets or any number of different things. So if we just put a variable in your Google spreadsheet, you can have a drive and just keep on checking a cell for how far something is away so we can basically fake it until we actually put sonars on. But this, the way the Vex VR world works with its sonar for the distance reader is extremely simple. We could do that pretty easily once we start putting sonar on our Raspberry Pi units. So what is the, <coughs> what is the max coordinate number for the Vex code thing? The playground? What do you mean the max <laughs> coordinate number? Like how big can the number get? I guess I can test this by just... I can't say I know that. Drive it looks forward. like in the right. grid map location, it starts at negative 900. Yep, and then it goes up to... Is it... And then it goes let's up see if it's to 200 per block. So, 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, I will 17, the right 18, 20. Back. So, it'd be... 10 by 10, 200 by 200. Chris? Yes, sir. What's our next Python project after Battleship? Well, that's something I was going to talk to you guys as far as what you might think you want to do. Um, but I do want to start integrating some other stuff with Google Maps. Uh, I do want to look into doing some database work within Python, uh, because that way we could import and write things to an internal database and be able to use that information, such as instead of just writing things to a global variable and then keeping it or editing it, we can save information into a database that we can then pull that information back out. But there are some pretty cool, easy ways to do basic small or lower end databases that we can just save information to. Uh, we can pull information off of a database like off the internet and then we can use that information. We could even pull information from our Google spreadsheet. So if you had say a bunch of data that we wanted the robot to have, you can have it pull that information from those cells in our spreadsheet and then save it into an onboard database so we can reference our onboard database instead of having to make API calls every time we want to do something. So there's a lot of different stuff that we can do. Uh, but I did want to see what you guys have a thought of as far as where you want to go. We can do some different stuff and start making it so we can play more games, like actually build Python-based games. We can do stuff for web interaction, but I really would like to steer it towards working directly with the Raspberry Pi and actually start taking some information from sensors on the Raspberry Pi and do some outputs to LED code. And like blinking code, mm -hmm. doing a bunch of different stuff there, and then actually being able to drive robots around. Um, so I just looked. It looks like since the field here, our virtual world, going back to that, since they're 200 by 200 millimeter, and there's 10 of them, that means it's going to be uh, 2,000 across. So I'm guessing dead zero is going to be the dead center. Are you working on that part right now, Elijah? Yeah. So I would well, venture I to say the board is broken down, and this would make sense, to an XY graph. 
just like when you guys are doing your uh, like your math classes, for example. Have you done graphing yet, Ronan? Have yeah. you done graphing? Uh, a little bit. I did okay. graphing like three years ago. So imagine if this whole field is just one big graph, and it's an X and Y graph. So your X is your left to right, your Y is in your up and down. Yeah. So if you right. want to go to a certain coordinate, then you can do that based on your X and Y location, and then it takes a robot to a certain coordinate. Chris? Yes, sir. Your face is on its side. Well, mm -hmm. why are you bothering looking at me anyway? This is know. the way the phone is doing that. Oh, that's actually really creepy, though. I'm going to stop this recording for the class right now, too, and we'll move on to some more stuff.